Today's Channel 6 News, live at 10, continues. Seen Ghostbusters, right? Oh, lots yeah. of times. Well, sure. there is a horror hotel in Gooding where you can actually get into the ghastly experience. So, who are you going to call? The International Paranormal Reporting Group, of course. They're going to take you for a tour. Photojournalist Doug Locksmith gives us a taste. Some people have said they've heard stuff. Some people said they've seen stuff. It's creepy. It's old. I think it's pretty haunted. As a kid, you knew that there was a bunch of sick patients that were out there haunting the place. It's actually freaky, you know. It gives me a, a weird feeling. It's an old building, you know. There's a history to it. And you know, looking at the windows, I'm thinking someone's looking out at me. I was outside the building and you were watching me, weren't you? Yeah, 1.9. We've been investigating here for almost four years now. And so we're very familiar with the building. We're very familiar with the owner and where we're going to set up. And they're going to use video cameras, audio equipment, DVR, digital video recorder. We've had a lot of different experiences here at the get-in. We've seen apparitions. We've gathered EVP. We've gotten DVR clips. And hopefully we'll just gather more of that tonight. It's right here, right where I'm standing. Oh, yeah. It's freezing, dude. Oh, my God, I just got the whole shivers yep. down my there back. Go, yeah. I can walk into a place, and I, I feel stuff. And I don't know what it is, because there's energy everywhere you never know if it's haunted you can't say something's haunted until you you know have proof of it if that was you knocking twice could you do it again A lot of the guests that we get that come here every month are pretty serious. They're seeking their own answers. 1918. Hello. How are you? It's not just for chills and thrills. Last time we were here, we set up a flashlight for you that you like to play with. And it's right here in the middle of the floor. All you have to do is just try and touch it. And even the littlest tap will turn that light on. Yes. Now I need to know that that's you. Can you turn it back off? Thank you. 98% of the cases that we go on will have a logical explanation for the activity. Where there really truly is activity, it's very exciting. Are you out in the hallway looking in at us, wondering what we're doing? Again. That's the second time, Lynn. You've heard yes again? <laughs> yeah, it was real quick that time. It was, yes. And the majority of your evidence will come through in, in EVP, electronic voice phenomenon. There have been EVPs gathered from the attic that are definitely male. There's been a female herd. Um, there's been a child herd on EVP. And there's a gentleman in the basement that's been heard on EVP. Is this maybe your safe room? Somebody just say yes. And we got a DVR clip downstairs in the basement one evening, and it's definitely a child. There was a table right there, and this is where they caught that. Be able to go in there and catch voices or, you know, EVPs, the things that we can't hear with our naked ear, that it would actually pick it up on an EVP. My name is Shane, and we're not here to bother you or upset you in any way. We go and we're sitting there talking to some, but we want to be able to hear it. And these voice recorders actually make it where we can actually hear the voices. If you had the personal experience and then you actually caught it on EVP, like if you heard something and then caught it on EVP, that's more proof that that thing is actually there. Are you the one that's making that noise? When I hear a noise, I'm not going to go, oh, that was a ghost. I want to try to find out what made that noise. I don't really think that there's anything to be scared of. Hopefully one day, proving to the scientific community that the paranormal isn't really abnormal. It's more of the norm. It's just misunderstood at this point. Are you in here with us? But there's nothing to be scared of in this building. Now the cost of the tour is $50 and the money goes back into renovations at the Get In. Want some more information? Just go to our website, kivitv.com. Click on news links in the big blue box. In the small town of Gooding, Idaho, one building has stood for nearly a century. In many ways, the history of this building is the history of Gooding. On your side, Jake Milder has the story. Our history's dying in, anymore. The buildings are going down the road. On the outskirts of Gooding, Idaho, a solitary building stands, watching over the small town. Built in 1917 by J. Wesley Miller, it was an anchor to a college campus. You know, this was the Episcopal Methodist Wesleyan College. The upstairs was the dormitory, and the classrooms were downstairs. 
Lorna Bard's mother graduated from the college a decade after it started. And this is my mother on this side. She was really a good basketball player and they played all the teams around here just like they do now. And she saved her Gooding College letter from her uniform. She was proud of that all through her life. The college closed in 1935 and sat empty until the state of Idaho built a tuberculosis hospital on the grounds a decade later. See, it was top of the line. It was beautiful. The grounds were kept up, grass green, flowers were all blooming. A lot of the patients, that was the last thing they seen when they come to the hospital. And they wanted that to look very, very nice. The centrally located, remote town of Gooding was an ideal place to quarantine patients as TB plagued the nation. Tuberculosis was a cruel disease. A lot of the people came here to die, and they knew they were going to die. No records exist of how many died in the hospital, but the work of Dr. Kenneth Tyler, the hospital administrator, led to the eradication of the disease. Dr. Tyler was brilliant. After the TB endemic, the building once more sat empty. For the next four decades, tenants tried to make use of it. It served as a courthouse, a jail, an addiction recovery center. But years of disuse and abuse threw the building into disrepair. It was a good place to come out and smoke cigarettes and drink beer, and <laughs> nobody knew you were here. And, and every once in a while, they'd, they'd catch something on fire and have to call the fire department. They'd have to come out and put out a fire. And as the building wastes away, so too has its history. As I grow older, it's really disturbed me that we didn't save the history. As teenagers, we're not worried about history. No, you're not worried about local history. And I really regret now that I don't have a lot of the stories that my parents and grandparents get told me. But there is still hope for this piece of history. New owners have bought the place, hoping to restore the building to its former glory. These folks uh, running a bed and breakfast, hey, sure, we're, we're all hopeful that it's very, very successful and, and brings people into gooding. Jake Melder, Today 6, on your side. Oh, but there's one more thing to the building. Some people say it's Ooh, haunted. That's right. So, on your side went on a paranormal investigation to see if evidence of ghosts could be captured. <laughs> now, that story's coming up tonight at 10 o'clock and, of course, at 9 o'clock on Fox 9 on your side. You're watching Today 6, on your side at 10. In the small town of Gooding, one building has stood for nearly a century. In many ways, the history of this building is the history of the town. It's a long history that many locals say the old TB hospital is haunted. Ooh. Photojournalist <laughs> Doug Locksmith begins in Gooding. There's some people that swears up and down that the old hospital was haunted. There's other people that says there's no way. Do you like to play hide and seek? It's just what you believe. What was that? The unknown is what keeps all of us coming back. If anyone's here with us, can you make some kind of a sound? The building that's remaining now, there's some people that still won't go into that building. Even with all the remodeling and what have you, it's still kind of eerie. It was something for young people to, to talk about, the ghosts at the old TV hospital. So the guys would bring their young girlfriends out here and, at midnight and take them through and scare them, that was fun. <laughs> I was afraid of the paranormal and I kind of got into it to prove to myself that it's not something to be afraid of and to see if it's really something that exists or doesn't. Is there a little kid that's up here with us that wants to come play? We had one experience where a team member, actually all three of us had heard knocking. And this is an old building, you can hear everything that's going on. And our one team member went down the hallway to um, see if a certain door was causing the knocking. And she did the same exact knock. It sounded exactly like what we heard. She did three distinct knocks. The second she turned around to come talk to us, heard three knocks right after she turned around. A couple workers staying in this room right here. Okay. And they swore every night between 3 and 5 that there was someone over there make, talking. We look at everything logically before we, we get on that bandwagon and classify everything as paranormal because half the time it's not. I don't say I'm a believer in it or what have you, but I have seen some weird stuff out here where the wind blows in two different directions at the same time, but that's Idaho. 
<laughs> so. was a hospital. Tuberculosis was a very deadly disease and uh, a lot of people died in these buildings. A lot of people may believe it's angels and demons. Some people may believe it's just your ancestors checking up on you or previous residences or like a tuberculosis hospital, people that lived and died here at the hospital. It's based upon interpretation. Interpretation. Three knocks. All the way from Gooding. Wow. <laughs> Thanks, production Luke. I appreciate your help. It did scary. Yeah. <laughs> three teams enter, like the three knocks. Oh. One team leaves. Yeah, see how that oh, all worked just out. One knock. A Kansas City <laughs> playoff determines the postseason fates of Nampa, Bora, Timberline. Find out who's bound for the state tournament next in sports. Silver City. It's a place that many Idahoans have never visited. To even get there, you have to spend hours driving down a windy dirt road, kind of washboardy. You get the idea. But back in the 1800s, it was a bustling mining town. More so even than Boise. Yeah. So many say ghosts of the city's past roam the streets and the hotel there. So we sent Lauren Johnson hunting. Not only is this hotel over 150 years old, but people died here. And some think it's haunted. So we're going to find out. I think every place is haunted if it's old enough. We'll all be ghosts someday. It's a tough way to look at life, isn't it? Roger Nelson owns the Idaho Hotel at the center of town, a place he calls home. Silver City was acquired by people who love it. You will not meet prouder old men of their shacks than the old men that own these shacks up here. Nelson's old shack is worn and full of history, and the town also old with rich stories to tell. His wife, Jerry, is eager to share. Some people definitely say, I cannot stay in that room again. They don't like me in that room. We had this one lady that would come back every year, and she loved room 26. She said the spirits are very, they like her. We've had several people say, ever see a guy in a long rider coat? And it's like, well, no, we haven't. Roger and Jerry share stories of a man, or is it a ghost, seen wearing a long riding coat. He's believed to be Samuel Lockhart. J. Marion Moore and Samuel Lockhart had a shootout, and Samuel Lockhart always wore the long rider coat. The gunfight was over a mining dispute, and both men died in Silver City. J. Marion Moore was buried in Idaho City, but Samuel Lockhart, well, people say he's still here, inside this hotel, and they say there's someone else, a ghost walking the hallways in a tuxedo. Okay, the guy in the tux is Odie Broombaugh, an old owner of the hotel, who actually shot himself in the south wing of the hotel. We're told that ghosts have shown up in this mirror, in photographs. I snapped selfie after selfie looking for any ghostly photo bomb, hoping I might meet Odie, but nothing. Okay, so this is room 10. This is the one where the lady at the lace. Guests have seen her floating in this room, going in and out of walls, floating on the balcony, and even screaming. Oh my gosh! If they're here <coughs> and they're haunting it, they're reasonably friendly. Have try you to, ever had anyone so scared they we, left? We try to keep that to a minimum. <laughs> yeah, I've had people check in. And, and back out at 2 o'clock, 2.30 in the morning. At 2.30 in the morning, that's when we did experience something. Our photographer, Doug, woke up at that exact time, turned on his audio recorder and rolled over to go back to sleep. The recorder captured this electronic voice phenomena, or EVP. Did you hear that? Listen closely. Was it a voice from the spirit realm? Hard to tell, but Doug did toss and turn. So it could have been Odie or Samuel or the lady in lace saying, don't move. I did it. I spent the night in this hotel that's over 150 years old. I slept great like a baby, or maybe they were those ghosts that were helping me sleep. Whether or not it's haunted, you'll have to find out for yourself. In Silver City, Lauren Johnson, Idaho on your side. Don't move. <laughs> People ask me, you've never been to Silver City? And I say, now you know why. <laughs> I haven't either, actually. And now I'm not. As we get into the Halloween spirit, we're taking a look at some spooky sightings from across the gem states. On your sides, Karen Lair joined a group of paranormal investigators as they toured the historic Idaho State Penitentiary. And tonight's hauntings of Idaho. 
Behind the historic charm and colorful foliage at the Idaho State Penitentiary lies a history of death, murder, and mystery. We're here at death row. This is a prison. The people that were put here were bad people. Were you innocent of the crime that you were charged and convicted with? There were deaths here. There were suicides. There were uh, people uh, murdered. There were people that were uh, hanged here. The prison has built a reputation around town as a place where ghosts gather, attracting paranormal investigators from around the country. Okay, is there somebody coming in to the cell block with us? Maybe those entities that uh, died here um, haven't moved on. Uh, maybe they're still floating around and they're still angry. Come up and knock on the glass next to Karen. Investigator Mike Clough has explored the old pen several times over the last few years, and each time there's one cell block that never fails to show spiritual activity. Now we're in here to visit with you. I've seen full-bodied apparitions. I've heard voices. I've seen movement. I've seen shadows. And on this trip. Is there anybody here that would like to come forward and just let us know what your name is? Several questions asked by the group were followed by faint sounds down the corridor or the sound of metal clanking against a cell door, but nothing compared to what happened next. He thought he saw some movement at about waist high and asked me to walk over. So I walked over there and I, he asked me to stick my hand out and to reach inside the door. What's there inside the cell to your left? Is that the bottom of the <laughs> leaving even more unanswered questions about the unexplained. Something grabbed my hand, my left hand on my ring finger and my little finger. Startled me. <laughs> I was pretty startled. Uh, and obviously, you know, when I looked down, you know, there was nothing there. This was investigator Mark Edwards' first trip to the old pen, but he says he's no stranger to spiritual activity. Has that ever happened to you before? I have been uh, grabbed before uh, at other locations. Um, I've been cut. Uh, I've got a scar here where I asked an entity once uh, if it could touch me, and it did. And I said, can you touch me harder? And it cut my arm and actually left a scar. Were you bleeding? Yeah. And while no blood was shed on this exploration. Who is in the cell where the door is standing open? Investigators left even more intrigued than when they arrived. Do you think that there are spirits or beings or entities still around the old pen? Yes, absolutely. Karen Lair, today six on your side. Well, ghosts or no ghosts, it's a cool place to go hang out and just walk around. And see the history. And see the history. Now, whether there's some old inmates walking around. Needless to say, um, Karen wasn't the Yeah, that's how she was always, yeah, you guys go first, <laughs> peeking around the corner. She's going to go back in the daylight. Yeah, yeah. She did volunteer for this, didn't she? I, th um, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Here's a live look at Boise from the Ford Dealers Tower Camp. Scott will be back right after this. Well, all week long, we have highlighted the paranormal kind of hot spots of Idaho. So tonight, we want to catch up with the Scientific Paranormal Investigation Research Organization. Also known as SPIRO for short, for a haunted historic tour of Old Town Pocatello. Photojournalist Doug Locksmith has the story. Three, two, one. Pocatello is very unique for hauntings. Everything that you get is real. For the paranormal junkie, this is a great thing. Sometimes we're in the dark together. Sometimes we're in crowded places together. Anything that happens out of the paranormal is just a, an additional bonus that's great. But you really are going to learn things about your town that you didn't know before. When you walk around Old Town or even in the warehouse district, you see all these parking lots that are there now. And everywhere there's a parking lot, a building used to stand. And so all of that history is gone. And if we don't document those things, if we aren't taking pictures, and if we aren't sharing that with the public, just like the Monarch, you never know when something's gonna happen and the building isn't there or isn't in the same condition it used to be. Pocatello came from the railroad. This was a rough, dangerous, violent town. And I think because of that, 
uh, it's, it's just different than every other town around it. But if you look in the bucket, there is also still coal in the bucket. And the old boilers and the coal rooms and the coal chutes and just all of these things that we don't experience anymore. And then to be able to share that with my kids or someone else's kids. Getting back to the ghost stuff here. We started the Haunted History Tour six years ago as a fundraiser for Old Town Pocatello. <laughs> the tour consists of going inside of buildings, not just walking outside and talking about stories. We go into the buildings and you get to see, touch, feel, and hear the stories of hauntings. And a lot of times on our tours, paranormal activity occurs. Down here in the basement, people have the feeling of being watched. You really do start to rely on your group to, hey, what was that noise? And, uh, you know, don't leave me behind. We've had years where people have been touched, where they hear voices. Uh, we've had years where people, entire groups of people, have seen things and jumped all at once. A lot of them are kind of shocked, you know? Some of them are like, no, that can't be happening. And then we show them what we've got, and they're like, oh my goodness, are you serious? And every year without fail, we have somebody come up to us and be like, look at this picture I got, or, or listen to this, this sound that I got. And we're like, see, you know? So it's, it's really neat to see them come in and their face is kind of like, yeah, okay. And then, okay, that's happening, you know? And then they actually get something. And they're like, oh, I got something, you guys, look. It's really a great thing to be able to say, hey, I went into the basement of that building and this is what I saw and this is what I learned and this is what I um, got to experience when I was in there. And so it's a kind of a cool thing to be able to go in and experience some of these buildings that most tourists don't get to do. My brother would love that because he'd just stand behind people and touch them on the shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> I, the, the thought did cross my mind. Yeah, that'd yeah. be kind of fun. That's, that's a lot of fun for the season. Well, Fox 9 on your side has much more news in our second half hour tonight. It's a campus over 100 years old and has a rich, <laughs> spooky history. The Albion Normal School once served as a college for thousands of aspiring teachers. It now sits abandoned, but some say it really isn't vacant. On your side's Chris Oswalt traveled to Albion to investigate. I went into this a little skeptical, not expecting much to happen. I left feeling violated and with a whole different perspective on paranormal activity. Okay, that was creepy. Deep inside what was once the women's dorm at Albion Normal School lives a legend that's just creepy. <laughs> Actually, I am probably your number one skeptic for that kind of a thing but I had, I've had some really interesting experiences here. I have heard voices and we've seen lights in the buildings. For years, paranormal investigators have spent countless hours ghost hunting on campus. Is there anybody here with us right now that would like to step forward and just say hello? I have heard voices in the girls' dorm. I've heard knocking, I've heard footsteps, doors creaking when there was no one in the room. It never fails. Every time, something, sometimes unexplained things occur. We start our hunt in the auditorium where... Was that you that touched Chris? During our quest for ghosts, an unexplained feeling, almost like the sensation of a hand on my back. Okay, did you feel something? Well, I thought I had hit her. So like, when I bumped into you earlier, mm -hmm. that's what I felt like I just did with you. It doesn't stop there. From the moment we got to campus, weird things were happening. Just take our interview with the owner, Heather Mortensen. And bats live in this building. <laughs> Did you hear that? <laughs> Those are bats. That is so That sounds like a bat. <laughs> it's so creepy that you say bats. <laughs> and then it goes <laughs> Oh, creepy. Oh. But the investigators from the Idaho Paranormal Reporting Group say there's probably a very good explanation. Coincidence, and I think you all walked into the <laughs> building and started talking and you woke them up and scared them. You happen to say bats, there happen to be bats in there, you disturb the bats and the bats flew away. Yep, right. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so maybe that was a coincidence, but explain this moment in the women's dorm. I heard walking down this way. Just gave me the footsteps? You gave me the chills. Somewhere over here. The whole time we were inside the dorms, the sound of footsteps. You behind me, Chris? Yeah, I'm behind you. Because I'm kind of scared right now. <laughs> Each time, investigators quickly got to work snapping pictures, using special equipment to check the air temperature, recording possible audio EVPs, and measuring EMF. Yep, yep, yep. that's it. Oh my gosh, I feel it. Do you feel it? Yeah. And that's the, the real deal. And the temperature is changing. 
They'd get an occasional reading here and there, but it wasn't until we moved to the dorm basement when things got interesting. <laughs> right here. And again, the same feeling on my back. Investigators had me talk to the ghost, hoping to get a response. Are you a fun person? It wasn't too chatty, so one of the investigators took over the questioning, and he got quite the response. You want me to build you a snowman? Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> Big time heebie-jeebies. The EMF reading went off like crazy for several minutes. Oh, that's oh, red. No. That's okay, red. let's see what I got. If the responses we got were really ghosts, they seem pretty friendly. I think that a majority of what does occur here at Albion campus is probably residual based on what we've experienced here. And giving skeptics like owner Heather a reason to believe she's not the only one staying on campus. As I was walking up the stairs, um, two customers were walking down the stairs and I heard a voice upstairs scaring them, kind of in a creepy little kid voice. And the people leaving were saying, that was the best scare ever. And they were walking out and I was prepared to go upstairs and congratulate this employee for telling them what a good job they were doing and, you know, done for the night, good job. And there was no one up there. I had my flashlight, I searched the whole upstairs, could not find anybody. The Albion Normal School is a major tourist destination. Retreats and family reunions are held there year round. And during the month of October, it's converted into a spooky haunted house. If you'd like more information on it, head over to IdahoOnYourSide.com for more information. In the studio, Chris Oswald, Idaho On Your Side. Oh, there's something strange. <laughs> Who are you going to call? call? Oh, yeah. yeah. What do you think? Call Ghostbusters. Call Ghostbusters. Wouldn't go there for Halloween. No. I'd go there for Halloween, though. <laughs> Look at that. That is our live tower cam from the Village at Meridian. Scott will be back after this. You're watching Six on Your Side at 10. It is almost Halloween, so that means it's Idahaunts Week at Six on Your Side. You ready for this one? Lacey Darrow takes us to Idaho City for a murder, mayhem, and ghost tour. Our history is exciting and it's interesting, and so are our ghosts. Meet Ginger Fields. Up to Mary Smith's room. Tonight's tour guide for the Idaho City Murder, Mayhem, and Ghost Tour. This is the most requested room in the house. Room one, Mary's room. Ginger is talking about the original owner of Idaho City Lodge, Miss Mary Smith. The building was built back in 1929. Mary has long passed, but guests say her spirit never checked out. This is a room that people say they lay down on the bed and Mary will lay down next to them. But that's not the only place Mary seems to like to hang out. People who have driven by here at night say they see a woman in white sitting in the rocking chair. We think it's Mary. Ginger has been doing this tour for three years, but the tour isn't just about the paranormal. The people were so interested in us being a ghost town that I had more questions about ghosts than I did history. So I thought, what better way to tell our history but through our ghost? Our tour through the darkened streets listening to the history of Idaho City led us to our next stop, an antique store, The Attic. Would you like to have your picture taken? Ginger says that strange things happen in this building. We can sit somebody in a chair and we will ask the entity to stand in front of the person and we'll take a photo and there will be something in the photo. Okay, it's there. It is, it's there. Something standing in front of you, something not in front of you. The real mystery of Idaho City lies in the midnight hour of our last stop, the sluice box. But it also has a ghost or two or three. After burning down, Larry Carter rebuilt the building, modeling it after the Winchester Mystery House. He thought if he kept building, he wouldn't die, just as Sarah Winchester did. He built lots of secret rooms. He has stairs that go nowhere. He has doors that open to nothing. He built a gazebo on top of the building, and this building was to communicate with the spirits and to bring the spirits into the building so they could walk around and he could visit with them. Larry Carter passed away five years ago, but back in 2002, he told us he plans to take construction into the next life. In fact, I've told my wife that when I die to put the hammer in the coffin with me because I might need it further. You want us to come in further? As we walked through the house, Ginger got out her ghost radar app an app designed for fun, but a tool Ginger uses to communicate with those who have passed on. 
They said this place was stacked, floor to ceiling again with stuff. Did it say something again? Shortly through the tour, it blurted construction, signaling to us that Ginger may not be our only tour guide. <laughs> It's not really scary. You get a feeling of that there's something here that wants to talk to you. Washington. You're from Washington. Oh my God, I'm from Washington. And he's standing right by you. Do you want to talk to us? At most. Do you have an interest in talking to us? Were you tall? Probably. Ginger said she was once a skeptic mostly in it just for the history. But with her personal experiences on the tour, she's now a believer. Gives me that creep sometimes, gives me the chills, but I don't know if these ghosts wanted to get me, they would have got me a long time ago. Lacey Darrow, six on your side. Lacey was a bit freaked out. Just just so you know, when she came back. Yeah, she loves Idaho City, but it's gonna be a while before she goes to that exact same spot. Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> The tour stops, by the way, at several more places on the way. If you want to go haunting yourself, you can find out more information about how to do it at sixonyourside.com. You're waking up with Six on Your Side. Good morning, Idaho. 542, and right now we're continuing our, just for fun, <laughs> Idaho Haunt series. And there have been rumors of our station being haunted. What? Yeah, so we decided to reach out and see what goes into an investigation. Why? I didn't want to know. <laughs> yeah, they should have told us that before we signed contracts here, for real. Uh, Lauren Johnson met a team of paranormal investigators here at midnight and explored this place to see if claims of ghosts were true. I'm firing up three quarter again. It is 1249. Before we would say that a location has paranormal activity, we would have to have evidence to back that up. Meet the International Paranormal Reporting Group. Energy can't be destroyed. So where does it go? dedicated to investigating all those claims of ghosts. And they always call and they say, you're gonna think I'm crazy, but... And then I remind them why they called me, and it kind of breaks the ice, and then they're more comfortable talking to us. That is a millimeter, it detects EMF. Even in our own station. We're at KIVI Channel 6 Boise, Napa, Caldwell. Did I say that right? Is that a good TV voice? Pete Kruger led the search. We're going to check out the red room. A place my coworkers have said they've felt something. It's in here. What's over? How do we get over there? Yeah, it's in here. Paranormal investigators use electromagnetic field detectors. It does not detect ghosts. Tonight, I learned why. 121.3, 90.8. High EMF can cause things like headaches. Nausea, you can see shadows. Oh, 172. 95% of the cases that we go on have a logical explanation for the activity. This light here is wonky. So you start walking down the steps. I start feeling creeped out. I'm standing here and I'm talking to somebody about the emergency exit plan, <laughs> cooking my brains. But if we can find that logical explanation and help that family feel comfortable in their homes or those business owners comfortable back in their businesses, then we've, we've done our job. Don't swing it around like a lightsaber, nice and slow. We explored high and low, checking EMF levels everywhere. That's a lot of what we do is a natural explanation for why you're seeing, hearing, feeling, whatever you are. Some places in the station I'd never even seen before. In each room, we held EVP sessions. Did you used to work in this building at some point? You know, electronic voice phenomenon. If you want to talk to us, you can go up to a red light and just say what you'd like to say to us. While the investigators recorded with both video and voice, they'll later watch and listen for any sound or movement we might not be able to see with the naked eye. Is there anybody down here joining us tonight? And then to the studio. Don and Michelle, we're at the studio right now checking to see if it is haunted so far. So good. Kill it. And one last EVP session. Who is your favorite news anchor? Lauren Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> we were almost done until one EMF detection. That's what we're looking for. Couldn't be explained. It's got to be something in here. It's got to be something in here. I... Okay, you're a ghost. You have eternity to do whatever you want. So what are you going to do? You're going to hang out yeah. by the water cooler <laughs> the on the bubble gum. Thing. That's That's right. Right. That's <laughs> It's folded up, it doesn't care. <laughs> I, it, it's gotta be a pipe or something in the ground. Well, let's hope yeah. it's just a pipe or something in the ground because I've eaten mm. out of that freezer where he said something was going on. Yeah, that's where I store my breakfast. <gasps> also, that's where I, I, I steal headaches. your breakfast. <laughs> I get headaches all the time, but 
I have always figured it was Jay Bates, but now I know it's, <laughs> it's something else. Well, the, we you have still to. We have breakfast. <laughs> no, that was that was kidding. <laughs> we have to tell you though that they, it takes about twelve days to look at that investigation that they did, and they've been going over those recordings for the last little while now. So to find out if it's really haunted, head to our website <laughs> sixonyourside.com for an update. Uh, look for this story and read all the way through to find the answer. Gosh, I know I what I'm doing on a commercial break. <laughs> Making entertainment news, it's Halloween week, right? <laughs> That's right. Candy and frightening things. Yes, boo. <laughs> Means it's time for the next Just for Fun story in our Ida Haunt series. Tonight we take you inside the Bishop's House. We told you at the beginning of the newscast, this is a three-story home. It was built in 1889 for the Episcopal Diocese of Idaho. And after a move, the structure now sits... Right next to the old state <laughs> Another pen. spooky place. Hmm. Fox 9's Tammy Scardino and photojournalist Doug Locksmith take us along on a local investigation. If there's somebody here with us, could you tell us your name, please? This location, and, and like many others, the history of the house itself is amazing. During the daylight hours, the former bishop's house might not seem so spooky. After all, people book their weddings here, and families gather here for reunions. But when the moon makes itself known on this night, an international paranormal reporting group public investigation begins. My name is Trevor. Uh, you can see that there are many of us up here in your space tonight. Our team starts off in the attic, Somebody whisper. where those who are more sensitive to paranormal activity were drawn to an unusual smell, the smell of alcohol on someone's breath. Yet no one in the room had been drinking that night. Skeeter Myers had a feeling at one point that someone brushed past her But the Napa resident didn't mind too much. I believe that there's a lot of things in this world that we don't know and understand yet. And she's not alone in her fascination with the unknown. I got into this field because of experiences that I'd had earlier in life that um, I felt that I needed some answers for. Trevor, I'm just gonna name this freak in my ear. While results of the investigation are not immediate, there were plenty of questions to be had. Please? While in the basement, an IPRG investigator thought someone whispered into his ear. Sounded like I'm foot or I'm footy. Wasn't the, one of the bishop's names footy? The paranormal group conducts investigations on a regular basis at homes and businesses free of charge. Their first concern is always to find a logical explanation for what's going on. So is Bishop Foot in here with us tonight? And about 95% of the time, they do. If you have a family that's terrified, of a room in their house or their house in general, and you're able to go in and find a logical explanation for the activity and explain that to them and they can feel comfortable in their homes again, then it's all well worth it. Can you move that chair? Can you put it where you like to put it? The woman who works alone at the bishop's house says every so often she finds that a chair in the kitchen has been moved in front of the doorway. When she puts the chair back, gets back to work, and comes back later, she finds that the chair has been moved once again. Can you tell us why do you like to move the chair over by the door? An act that might seem unbelievable, but very real for those who see it with their own eyes. I think unless you actually experience things, it's hard to believe, but once you do experience things, it kind of broadens your mind a little bit. It's such a beautiful house. I've always wondered about that. I just thought someone kind of wanted to go inside. It's got some now really... you don't, do yeah. you? <laughs> no, that's right. Cool history, though. <laughs> there was actually plenty of activity. Activity reported that night, all playful in nature, of course. There was mm. no hard evidence gathered. You can view a photo gallery, though, from the investigation and of the Bishop's House, which is really a neat treasure. You just go to sixonyourside.com. Gorgeous house. The group has a day-long class on everything paranormal. That's coming up on November 14th. Head to our website for more information. All week long, we have highlighted the paranormal hotspots of Idaho. So tonight, we look into reports of a mysterious apparition that has been nicknamed Melvin. Yeah, Melvin. That's his name. Yeah, okay. In the basement of the <laughs> antique shop in Pocatello. It's not very scary, Melvin. Uh, Merlin. Better than Merlin. Well, I guess Merlin <laughs> was a wizard. The Scientific Paranormal Investigative Research Organization checked out the claims of ghostly encounters inside the Old Town Mercantile and Antique Shop. Photojournalist Doug Locksmith has the story. Tell us your story. We want to know all about you. 
You don't meet a lot of people that say, oh, I go into 100-year-old buildings all day and hang out in the dark with my friends and see if we can find a ghost. Is there anybody in here with us? We get to go and investigate mysteries. Chills, just like right. straight up cold spots, just up and down my spine and all over my arms. We get to go in and, and talk to people about their experience. <sighs> We're not here to investigate, oh, some scary ghost in some building. We're here to learn about people and what they did throughout their lives. There's sometimes where it gets kind of creepy. Oh, I just saw like a shadow. And it's like your intuition will kick in and you'll be like, I think something's watching me. Just like this across. I don't get creeped out by it, but I've also been doing it for seven years. See, that's what it does. Things putting off energy. The first time I ever did it, I was like, okay, this is kind of weird, kind of freaky. Were you a guest at this hotel? but now that I've been doing it for so long. Oh, see, there it is right there. It's just kind of second nature to me. Can you answer questions by tapping this? Most of the activity was occurring on the top floor. I felt the breeze of someone going by. We had everything from touching to uh, answering questions. Are you able to come back and make that device light up again for us, please? I believe that there are different presences, uh, different spirits. Is that you? And they have different ways of communicating with us. And so whatever's in this building. Did you move in here? Nothing to fear. In fact, I, they seem somewhat playful. Oh, hi. Wherever you are. Hi. I want to believe, but I'm very skeptical of it. But please say something. I'm like the right in between guy that can kind of argue for both sides. They're following me around all over up here. If there's a spot in the building that everyone's like, I don't think I want to go in there. I'm like, well, too bad because that's where I want to go and it's creepy and that's what we're here for. Yeah, and I can see there's a cold spot right un like underneath your sleeve on the back. It's almost like a full time job, but we do it because, well, number one, we get along so great and we like being around each other. but. You know, we just get into such incredible places that normal people don't get into. I think that's the biggest perk. Are you Melvin? When we investigate a building, we ask, hey, where have the experiences been? What type of experience have you had? Is there more than one of you here? Did you hear things? Have things moved? Have you been touched? If something appears to me, I'm going to be totally okay with it, but until it happens, I don't think I can really know. Can you make the light go off? I would probably jump. I won't. I would probably freak out, but then after I'd be like, oh, how cool was that? Like, that is what we do this for. That is what we want. I think we get nervous and scared because it's the unknown. Make a sound like it's running down the hall that we can hear. Sometimes you want to believe that the creepy noise is really, you know, something more than just a creepy noise. And who are you? We get to go out and prove that, that it is or that it isn't. Are you now trying to communicate with us? Even if we didn't get anything, we get to hang out, have a good time. and learn about a really cool building with so much history that very few people get to learn about. Well, last year, Pocatello High School made national news when a security camera caught some unusual activity. Lights flickered on and off, and an image of something appears to walk in and out of a men's bathroom. A lot of what's seen in the video is up for interpretation, but at least one online publication put Pocatello High School on the top 10 list of haunted high schools in America. Now, paranormal investigators tour the halls. On your side's photojournalist Doug Locksmith has the story. The lights in this hallway started to flash on and off all of a sudden. People went back and reviewed the, the security footage. There was a translucent figure that seemed to be walking through the halls, going in and out of this bathroom. Everybody that comes in this building can have an experience, and I think that was just one of them. Sometimes when we'd be sitting in class, the door would just slowly close or slowly open, and our teachers would just be like, oh, don't mind that, it's just the ghost. Pocatello High School wasn't just a high school. It was a gathering place. People would come here and have picnics on the lawn. They had parades. There were all kinds of things going around this building. This room is known as the heart of Pocatello High School. And the reason why is because after the fire, there was a part of the building that was actually salvaged, and this was it. And something very interesting <coughs> happened here. It was so interesting that I actually made it the very first story in my book, The Ghost of Pocatello High School. And it's a story told to me by the janitor that was with us our first investigation. He told me he was mopping right around in this area. He looks up, and in that doorway, there was a young boy standing there. He said that he took his mop, and he turned and he put it in the bucket. And when he turned around, the boy was gone. When I hear these stories from these janitors, I truly believe 
that they are having these experiences because I can feel the honesty and the sincerity coming from them when they when they tell me, hey, yeah, this is what's going on and this is what I experienced. At this point, we're gonna walk in these doors, we're gonna walk up the stairs, and we are gonna meet in the library. The story of the librarian who hung herself on the chandelier after being uh, left at the altar by her fiance. We can't verify who she was exactly when it happened, but what we can do is we can go back over 60 years of documented sightings of the librarian in these windows. So if you're ever driving by, look on up and you might see her. I, uh, uh -huh. He saw actually cleaned up the building, locked up, was standing out on the sidewalk out front, turned back and saw the librarian up in the window. Wow. Never came back here, it scared him so bad. One of the stories about Pocatel High is the story of a suicide pact between two girls who said that they were going to hang themselves in the lockers. The girl who had her locker on the top floor wound up not hanging herself, but the girl who had her locker on the bottom floor did. And for many years after she hung herself, that locker was haunted, made noise, rattled all the time, disturbed classes. People even said the books flew out of it sometimes. The school eventually wound up taking the entire row of lockers out and making a janitor's closet out of it. But the haunting continued in the bathroom that was right next to it. Today, girls go into that bathroom and they say lights come on and off, toilets flush by themselves, but most of all, they smell the strong scent of lilac perfume, and that's how you know that she's here. People may say, well, ghost hunting's just kind of a thrill-seeking. I prefer to call it para-archaeology. And the reason why is because just like archaeology, we're looking for remnants of human behavior. And if ghosts do exist, if spirits do exist, that's what we're finding. If there is somebody in this building, it's because this building meant something to them and they choose to be here. So John Bryan was not only our tour guide inside Pocatello High School, but he's also a graduate of the school class of 1991. His grandfather, also named John Bryan, was in the graduating class of 1931. John says ghost stories from Pocatello High can be traced back generations, and new stories are being told each year, proving to John that Pocatello High School is indeed one of the most haunted high schools in America. If you want to learn more about this story, you can just check out our website, sixonyourside.com. Love this time of the year. It is that time for Idaho's supernatural, paranormal, and ghostly stories from around the gem state. And our first story this week, the haunted mansions of Albion. All right, Don, so it is one of Idaho's largest Halloween attractions located just south of Burley. Right now it hosts seasonal actors who kind of roam mm -hmm. around dressed as ghosts and clowns and other creatures of the night. But some say it may not just be actors. It may be truly haunted. Photojournalist Doug Locksmith checks it out. We've had some confirmation around here that there's things that can't be explained. It's just a creepy feeling about it, you know, it's just, that's what it was when we came here. We thought, boy, this is the perfect place for this type of venue. It's different, it's nice, it's absolutely like in the middle of nowhere. And there was always the haunting that everybody had heard about. Oh, my mind. Yeah, this is a pretty scary place. Yeah. The confining hallways and the constant turn backs, just the blind corners. And then somebody's literally waiting right around the corner to <laughs> finish them off. I love the makeup and being able to scare people. Just seeing the smile on their faces and hearing everybody laugh. The people that are here performing, they're here because they're on the other side of that ball. They're the ones that want to be the ones that scare people. And, and it's a rush. We've had a lot of these kids that have had paranormal activity, ghosts that they've seen, all kinds of stuff that they feel that have scared them. And some of them will work one night and they don't come back. Last year in this building, I was in the basement and I was taking pictures and there was like this like, like um, black aura. It was just standing in the doorway. I guess ever since then I was just like, I want to work in this place. I want to be able to experience what others have experienced and be able to scare the living crap out of people. Well, like me and my buddy Christian are just gonna walk through it and meet my buddy at the end, like just kind of meet up in the middle. We probably got like 10 feet into it and he saw something weird. He had his flashlight and I was just using my little phone. It didn't go very far. I had chills down my back and he saw something weird move and I was, we were out of there just fast. And 
our buddy meet, supposed to meet us in the middle. He didn't meet us in the middle. He didn't even go in. You can just look out on the campus and with this, this beautiful green lawn, and just you can see past the, the boarded up doors and the windows, and you can kind of see the life of this campus the way it used to be. The old Albion Normal College, it actually closed in the 50s. And then it reopened for a very short period until 1969 to a Christian college. The teachers that teach our children in Idaho, a lot of them came from teachers that taught them that went to school here. Back in those days, you walked in here into some of the rooms and it looked like they were in the middle of doing something and walked away. It was creepy. You know, I have to say the other night when uh, I was shutting off the lights in Miller Hall, and it was about 11.30 at night, somebody had forgotten to shut them off, and I went up there on the second floor, and I never believed in ghosts. And all of a sudden, I hear these footsteps. The door next to me closes, and I think it's my wife, and I call her and say, hey, did you just walk in the building? And she says, I'm in bed where you should be. And, <laughs> and so I'm like, okay, so I walk out there thinking somebody's there. Nobody's there, I go downstairs, the door's locked. So it didn't freak me out because I thought it was my wife. But do I believe in ghosts? Something was weird, something happened there. Owners of the haunted mansions of Albion say they make the money to keep up the attraction, helping to fund the restoration of the historic buildings, but of course of such neglect over so many mm -hmm. years, it's going to take a lot of time to fix them up. And in the meantime, owners say they will remain as the haunted mansions of Albion. To find out more about the Albion Normal School, check out our website at sixonyourside.com and stay tuned. All week long, we are featuring haunted locations from all over the state leading up to Halloween mm -hmm. night in our special Ida Haunt series. Nice job to Doug, our photojournalist who yeah, put that great together. Great costumes. Yeah, very Scared fun. me, man. Yeah, trick You're or treat. Shaking. I, you were shaking. <laughs> I was a little bit. <laughs> put on half a suit. That's because of it. <laughs> Broncos taking on UNLV this week. We will have a full report on the team coming up after the break. Halloween is a great occasion for the latest installment in our Just for Fun Idahaunts series. Boise State University's communication building was once the Student Union Building. Built in 1942, it was a gathering place where students hosted club meetings and school dances. But according to one legend, the building may have a ghost. Six on your side's Lacey Darrow has the story. I've heard of objects moving, screams, footsteps, loud moans. The students have been talking about this for years and years. How far back, we don't know. On this entire top floor, spread these around. Just remember where you put them. Pete Kruger with the International Paranormal Reporting Group leads this investigation. Infrared cameras, audio recorders, EMF readers, all equipment used by the IPRG to document paranormal activity. Dinah, if you're with us, would you be willing to share your story with us? Dinah is said to be the communication building's resident ghost. Every culture in the world has ghost stories. Every culture in the world has some belief of some kind of afterlife. We've never documented anything that would prove that um, whatever is occurring there is harmful. Marie Cuff, executive director of the IPRG, says the story of Dinah dates back many years. Back around the 1950s, when they had a dance, a young lady was supposed to attend with her boyfriend, and he canceled on her. She went ahead and decided to go to the dance by herself, and when she showed up, he was there with someone else, and it broke her heart. She ran out of the room and into one of the back stairwells, where she cried, and then she went into one of the bathrooms and hung herself. Did you just hear that? Although the story of Dinah may be unconfirmed, Marie does know why people call the alleged ghost Dinah. Marie says a teacher was working late one evening when... There was some writing that appeared on one of the chalkboards. He finally said, if there's somebody here, who are you? What is your name? Nothing. So he asks again, and on one of the pianos, the old song, Dinah Won't You Blow, began to play. And so he named her Dinah. Marie says the key to investigating the paranormal is having an open mind. And for Marie, that means looking for a logical explanation for any reported supernatural activity. And her team may have found one. Oh, wow. High levels of electromagnetic fields. People that might be sensitive to electromagnetic fields, there's a whole list of, of symptoms. Feeling of people watching them, you know, of uh, uh, crawly skin, paranoia, nausea. headaches, nausea. Marie says that high EMF levels could explain some of what students claim to experience here, but not all. 
they get a little creeped out, but they're also there late at night by themselves quite often. So some of that could just be being there by yourself late at night in a dark building. The cause for the hauntings there or the paranormal activity there is kind of unknown because even through all the research, there's no proof that a young woman actually hung herself there. So what really is causing it is kind of unknown. This is an academic institution. That's what they do. All these little buildings around us is they look for answers for problems. This one doesn't have an answer. Lacey Darrow, Good Morning Idaho. Kinda creepy. It's 6.52 right now. Take a live look at the village at Meridian. Our top stories and a look at your commute plus the last look at the forecast are all coming up next. Good Morning Idaho. If seeing is believing, then our next story, well, you're just going to have to decide for yourself. So in 2012, Sci-Fi's TV show Haunted Highway featured the old Masonic Lodge in Silver City. The current owners of the building say the folklore and stories of paranormal activity at the location, pretty much nothing new to them. But they wanted to know if the stories were true, so they asked Aubrey Tibbist, a self-described medium, to investigate. Six on your side's photojournalist Doug Locksmith has the story. Sometimes you think you see somebody out of the corner of your eye and you look and they're gone. And I think everybody experiences that. Generally, there, there is somebody there. I do see, you know, the other side I always have. This is sort of my passion to go through and look at the history of things and talk to the people that used to be here. There's probably three that I'm listening to right now. I don't know if I would call me psychic. I'm intuitive. Sometimes I know things. Sometimes I don't. It's hard for me to open up just because when you're little and you think everybody can see their loved ones and then you come to find out they can't so for years i kind of shut that down there is a lady in here sweet sweet lady okay um, she's dressed in white she really liked working with her hands she had two children that passed and she misses them she wants to see them there's people throughout this whole building that reside here but she does not allow them in her space. This is her, her domain. They're excited because this is where I used to be. This is what I used to do. And they get excited to tell you kind of their story. There's a man standing here behind the, behind the table, the counter. Um, he's just smiling. He's not saying anything. You guys have this fancy equipment and whether you see it on there or not, how do I prove to you that I see it? Because your equipment shows that it doesn't, yet I clearly see it. I think there's no real answer out there for that. This for me is weird. It's like I feel the whole top of my head opening and it, I can feel it right along here. It's almost feels like somebody's lifting my hair. It's a really weird feeling. They don't want to be made out to be, you know, like a freak show, like a circus. Come check out this guy that can move the chair. You know, can you move the table? Ooh, we move the table. They want somebody genuine, somebody down to earth that's really going to hear them. And that's, that's what I do. So, I'm letting all of them know right now, whoever wants to move and cross over, be with, be with your loved ones. You've been stuck forever. If you want to go, I will help you. Oh my, all right. To hear more from Aubrey Tivitz experiencing inside the old Masonic Lodge, you can head to 600side.com. Halloween, of course, brings out the ghouls and the goblins Ooh. and a few princesses. Mm -hmm. Just throw them in there for a night of trick-or-treating <laughs> or a trip to a haunted house. But some folks say there's one spooky spot in Boise that really is haunted. The old pen. Especially at night. Mm. So just for fun, at least that's what we told them, just for fun. <laughs> we sent Chief Photographer Doug Locksmith and crew to check it out. People hearing footsteps. <laughs> the sound of cells opening and closing. There's been deaths here. The old Idaho penitentiary absolutely is haunted. If you're here, man, can you let us know? It's not just a typical ghost tour that you can go on. We do an actual investigation here. Did you hear that? We'll have five teams. It sounded like a, a no or a, like a whisper no, didn't it? And then they'll visit each building and conduct an investigation throughout the night. Now's your chance to communicate with us. We've heard stories from guests and from investigators about most every area of the site. How many are in here with us? I don't know if they leave me alone because I work here or not but uh, I just look forward to seeing what everyone else comes in contact with. If you're here with us, can you knock on the wall? Can somebody just make noise? I heard that. I heard that too. I heard that stomach growl. You heard knocking from within the 
the wall. Can you do that again? These things don't perform on command. That's why we do our investigations, and we just hope that something will happen throughout the night. I just sit in the back of the corner, and my friend had told me there's weird vibes, which I felt because I didn't want to leave this room. Something like glanced against my head, so I turned around to see if it was a web or something. There was nothing there. Left. Excuse me. There was nothing there. It's just weird when it happens to you. You know, you see it, you hear it, and then it happens to you, and you're just like, what is that? <laughs> strange but it's, it's right in that corner like I said on there it says devil and die well we've been doing investigations here for several years now because of the reported activity one of the things that can happen in this maximum security area is the inmates might play with your hair I've been touched here it was up against the cell doors it felt like a man reached up and ran his fingers through my hair and then I heard ooh pretty in a man's voice I would say a majority of the time I don't get scared I want to know what's happening I want to investigate further this is what we do. We're paranormal investigators, so we want these types of things to happen and we want to be able to capture them. Is there anyone here you'll communicate with? If there is paranormal activity, that may be why they, they tend to leave the staff alone because we, we're the stewards of their stories. If this activity is, is real, that this is as good a place as any. One Idaho family is saving a piece of Gem State history one scare at a time. Tonight we take you what was once the Albion Normal School established by the state legislature 125 years ago. We're going to introduce you to the family who's turned the facility into a, well, a Halloween attraction to help actually restore the historic buildings. Photojournalist Doug Locksmith shows us. This place is just part of my life. I just, I can't, I don't even know how to describe how I, why I love this place. It's always been deep in my heart. It's such a beautiful, peaceful place. This campus has such a positive, good feeling, and there are so many people here on a regular basis that come back here to visit the campus when they went to school here, and they have such great memories. For years, it was just heartbreaking to watch the weeds grow and just things, just the vandals just did horrible things to the building and you know and once they start breaking in then the weather and animals start getting in and just really gets terrible. My husband purchased this when I was home pregnant and sick in Boise and when I came here and he brought me here I was like what in the world are we doing here? We had to put on masks and like gear up to even go inside the buildings because they were so bad. They were just crumbling apart. The buildings were obviously that where we have people come and stay we've stripped them down to the studs and completely renovated with new wiring electrical and plumbing and all the things necessary for a comfortable stay. The buildings that we use for the haunted mansions, they were scary. It's hard for me to walk in these beautiful buildings and run into all these spooks and stuff that I have to work my way around. But really, when you think about it, how else are they going to be able to bring in that revenue? If they were just to jump in and repair the buildings, they would be losing money, not making money. It's really fun and kind of ironic because when we talked to Patty, the historian here at the museum, her dad and her grandfather were maintenance workers here and they actually have memories of little haunted houses that the school put on up in the gymnasium. They had a haunted house here over in Miller Hall. They did a haunted house just for a fun weekend kind of thing. And so we think it's just really fun that that historically they did those things here for entertainment. And now here we are so many years later doing this as well that's helping maintain these buildings. Oh, is it haunted? Yes. <laughs> but I wouldn't say haunted in the traditional sense because in my mind haunting is more of a scary thing, but um, there are definitely ghosts around and, and my theory on that, when I give tours, I tell people my theory is that the students and teachers that attended school here, they loved it so much. I've had the privilege of speaking to a lot of them and after they pass on, some of them want to come back to visit and some of them are practical jokers, I think. <laughs> so that's my theory on the ghosts. But yes, there are ghosts. She's not afraid of no ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> the Bordensons say they have future plans for the campus that may include a school inside the former women's dormitory and a variety of summer programs for the kids. But for now, the campus will remain the haunted mansions of Albion. For more extended <laughs> and exclusive content about the school, you can head to our website, sixonyourside.com. It is Halloween night, and of course, that means trick-or-treating, ghostly costumes, and scary stories. 
And for one of our photojournalists, it also means a little bit of fun. Our Doug Locksmith went to the Requiem, the haunted attraction in downtown Caldwell, and spoke to employees who say the place might really be haunted. Take a look. Telling people it's actually haunted when they come through, it definitely creates a better atmosphere. Finding out that the place you're going to go get scared in is actually haunted and there could be a chance that you see one of the ghosts or have something happen to you helps create a fearful environment. I definitely think it's haunted and I don't think anything will ever change that in my mind. When we were moving everything out of here for the Coldwell Pawn Shop, my daughter would see shadows going from one corner to this corner. Chris first told me the story of the building, how it was the undertaking and the funeral parlor and people say they get scratched, they feel touches. I, mean, I thought that was all a bunch of bogus to be honest. We do have paranormal groups come through and they asked who was the entity and pretty distinctly you can hear an old lady or a woman at least go Alyssa. It's definitely pretty spooky too if you're in here by yourself or in a room by yourself. It's it's unsettling at times. For the first couple years, no, I was totally fine with this place. Like I almost didn't really think that any of this existed really. I'm one of those people that needs to see like some actual proof before I start just believing something. Where are you going? Stay with me, my new roommates! The main portion of your scare is definitely going to be from us, but the mood of knowing that this place could actually be haunted and you could actually see a ghost here possibly. From what we've been told, there's two in the back and then there's one that hangs out around the middle and then there's one that goes uh, out in there. So this is where our new one hangs out. This is where any blonde actor that we've had up here, she's made really, really sick to the point where they have to leave work. As soon as they get out of our building, she's get they're fine. So we can only have girls that have dark hair working up here in this room. We do know it's a female entity. I'm going back to my set room where I'm positioned to scare people, and there is this white figure standing in my path and it is crystal clear <laughs> and I came around the corner jumped so hard I ran into the wall behind me like totally scared the pants off of me <laughs> and then it was just it's just gone it's gonna take a lot more than her to scare me away from here but the I can't ignore that. <laughs> that was something real. Until you have something happen, you're never going to truly know for yourself. Feeling somebody tug on the back of my sweatshirt, that I could not explain at all 100% because I know there was no one behind me and it was just my mom and I in that building that day. And when the only other person you know is inside this building looking at you as you go tumbling down a staircase, there's nothing that really even comes close to how terrifying that is. Owners of the Requiem tell us they have had several paranormal groups investigate their building, claiming up to 30 entities may be haunting the location. If you want to check it out, they plan on being open again next Halloween season. This is Idaho News 6. Here's another just for fun Halloween story for you ahead of the holiday weekend. The Boise Little Theater is a local standby. It's entertained guests for more than 70 years, making it Idaho's longest running all volunteer community theater. But is something spooky lurking backstage? Our reporter Nicole Camarda and chief photographer Doug Locksmith teamed up with Western Idaho Paranormal to investigate. Boise Little Theater has been closed down since the beginning of the pandemic, but a few special guests have stuck around and made themselves known. There's a lot of skeptics out there who don't believe it. From my personal experience, I know they're here. I know they are present. The ghosts that, that we have encountered here in, in the theater are really super nice, really super friendly, and they seem to be pleasantly happy here. Is Justice or George here? Sometimes he won't let the lights turn on. I was standing here one night, just like this, watching the show. I could see both doors, see both um, uh, light switches and the lights came on, came off, came on, came off, came on, came off. And I'm like, and I told him to stop it, and it stopped. It was kind of peaked out. It definitely felt like you're being watched. A few times I saw shadows in doorways and heard some strange sounds tonight that we we're hoping we caught on our recorders. It's really dark in here. 
you think you could turn some lights on for us? The other side of the lobby is actually the poster of the, sh the show that was on stage when, the, when the, theater, the original theater burnt. Does the play The Fifth Season have any significance for you? During the fire, of course, people panic and get out. And then the two people who perished in the fire, the one came back into the theater to save the furs, which were on loan from one of the um, fur shops downtown Boise. And the other guy who actually perished in the fire, he, his wife went out one side of the building, he went on the other side of the building, he couldn't find her. So he went back into the theater to find her. And unfortunately, he perished in the fire. We can fill them here. Their presence is known. So what happens is when you walk through the breezeway right here, right, this window right here, because normally the lights are shut off into the costume room, and his face has appeared out this window looking at you. And I've experienced him looking at me a couple times. In the costume room, it's a very tight space. A lot of clothes, a lot of aisles of clothes. Started getting some activity. I heard what sounded like a loud vocal yawn and uh, confirmed that wasn't any of our teammates. And then I believe you were holding a device that started lighting up oh unexpectedly because it hadn't done anything all night. And we had another device start going off like crazy. Okay, now stop touching it. Not really sure what that was all about. Or are you trying to make a song? <laughs> I believe that there are some things here that we haven't been able to explain yet. And I know that people have had experiences here to suggest that there is a haunting here. All right, so uh, let's spread out a little bit, I guess. And maybe what was that? What was that? And I don't think they are out to harm anyone here at the theater. They're at the theater because they loved it, and this is a happy spot for them. They were part of our lives, and they're still part of our lives. I think when the theater burned down and they lost, they lost their lives, unfortunately, I think we moved over from there to here. They needed to be part of the theater still. And the people are here, they, you know, they feel the love, they feel they're part of something still. And I think that's why one of the things that they, we don't ever have any negative experiences with them is because they're here and they're with us and they are wanting to be part of our productions. Nicole Kamarda, Idaho News 6. Okay, the scare factor doesn't stop there. This Halloween, we're also taking you behind bars at one of the spookiest spots in the state, although the old penitentiary has been closed for a long time. Some say inmates still haunt the halls. Our Doug Locksmith with Matt Sizemore, tagged along with paranormal investigators into the wee hours of the morning, hoping to see some proof for themselves. We do have ghosts. They're very elusive as far as being captured on video or camera, but the experiences are something that I can't deny. People come to me and I know in their eyes, listening to their voice, that something happened to them. They're there. You can catch the full story right here at 10 on Halloween night. This Halloween, we're taking you behind bars at one of the spookiest spots in the state. Although the old Idaho penitentiary has been closed for almost 50 years, some say inmates still haunt the halls. Our Doug Locksmith and Matt Sizemore tagged along with paranormal investigators into the wee hours of the morning, hoping to see some proof for themselves. A warning, some of the sights and stories you'll see might be a little spooky, and some, Matt says, are absolutely ridiculous. Six on our side. Yes. <laughs> yep. I'm Matt. This is Doug. Hello. Hello, Doug. Hi. And we are on your side. Yeah. <laughs> Once we see a ghost, then we're yeah, out of here. Then we're on no one's side. <laughs> well, I'll see you later. When people come here, they get that heavy feeling, that sense that sometimes they're being watched, sometimes that they just sense sadness. Think of all the history that's involved in this structure, of all the people that have come through here. They came to this location under unfortunate terms. Is that a ghost right there? Just thinking about it. Oh. Ghost! <laughs> <laughs> See? There was violence. There was death and destruction. There were good guards. There were bad guards. There were good inmates. There were bad inmates. And so all of those experiences and all that heaviness really does come to light. And so that's why people have paranormal experiences, I believe, when they come here. Looked down the courtyard. There's nobody there. And I started coming back. And then the clinking noises followed me all the way back. It's a millimeter. Millimeter. And what is it measuring? EMF, electromagnetic fields. All right. I'm searching for people named Mel. <laughs> Mel, are you here? Mel Brooks, where are you, please? It's 57.74, uh, 57.2. So it's going down now. 
We're getting less mail here, if you will. But we hope when people look at the history behind things, if they have that heavy feeling, they're going to understand better why they have that feeling. I was standing in front of one of the solitary uh, cells, and when I had used my flashlight to look into the cell, there was a mass that was darker than dark, and it stayed there for a few seconds, and then it darted off to the left, and that's not possible because there's a wall there. And there are only parts of light. Oh, that's awful. Oh, no. No, no, it gets worse. Oh, good. Um, yeah. A couple more to go. I don't think we were haunted. Didn't hear anything. Didn't see anything. But, uh, as I think Sean Connery once said, the night is young. He might have said that. I don't know if he said that. I've worked here for so long, I don't want to believe in the paranormal because I'd be scared to come to work every day. But there's things I can't explain. I like to think those uh, those ghosts or those spirits appreciate that we're trying to tell their story and trying to tell their perspective, good, bad, or otherwise. You see right here, like my wrist started hurting right here and then a weird little bump popped up. Probably just hypertension. But uh, I don't know, that was weird in there. I did notice that, but I thought, eh. I ate a lot of uh, processed meats today. Could have been that. My arteries uh, clogging. But uh, who knows? Maybe a little apparition could have smacked my hand and said, listen, take this seriously. You can bring a spirit home with you. Have you heard about that? And do you think that's true? I have heard about that. Is it true? I can't say for sure. Have I ever felt that I've brought something home with me? No, but I can't speak for somebody else in their experience. Have you been haunted yet, Doug? I don't think so. Okay, there's still time. I don't think so. Plenty of it. Yeah, that's a creepy place in there. Yeah. I would not want to shower in there or anywhere on this premises, actually. Take those stories that maybe you can't quite explain it, but when you put it in the context of where you are, who was here and what they experienced, all of a sudden, maybe it makes a little more sense. Maybe it leans towards that evidence of the paranormal. Going on a ghost hunt with Big River Paranormal isn't just a fun and spooky adventure. 100% of all proceeds go right back to the Idaho Historical Society, so it's a win-win for everyone. If you're interested in going on a paranormal investigation, we have that information on this story on our website, idahonews6.com. Uh, Halloween means some scary good fun with costumes, candy, jack-o'-lanterns, and of course, Haunted houses, but have you been to the haunted mansions? Our Natasha Williams takes us on a spooky stroll through the haunted mansions of Albion in today's Made in Idaho. This abandoned Idaho college is rumored to be one of Idaho's haunted hotspots. But if you want to brave this attraction, you'll have to head out in the middle of nowhere. It was the Albion Normal School. 100 year old building. <laughs> They're beautiful brick buildings. There's also a really special history and a special feeling here. We've met a lot of people that went to school here. It was an old college campus. Have fun. Do you like my doll? Yeah, she's very nice. Cute. Very nice. She doesn't like you. Oh. I just love it. I love the atmosphere, all the other actors. It's just a great place to work. <laughs> it's fun scaring people, making grown men scream like little girls. <laughs> It's probably my favorite. <laughs> Actually, I get scared. Like I'm not paying attention and an animatronic jumps out at me. I'm like, no! <laughs> See you around. I do believe in the paranormal. It's just, you know, I haven't had, like, seen one that'll be like, oh, yep, yep, Casper's real. Casper's real, I'm out. We do have a lot of neat stories here that are associated with the history of the campus that are ghost-related stories that the community over time have talked about. A lot of people drive up here and they're like, what in the world? Why would they have built a college here? And that was my first reaction as well when we came here. The community petitioned with the state of Idaho to bring a college here and they agreed to build a college if the community would come together and build the first building, which they did over here at the stone building that's now a museum. Over time, it, it closed down. And then they had the Magic Valley Christian College come in also during the, I believe the 60s and 70s. Then 
then from my understanding, they had a few other small groups come in, but then it was uh, abandoned and they boarded up all of the windows. The city of Albion had a great task to try to take care of it and keep people out. A lot of graffiti, a lot of vandalism. But in 2008, we came and purchased the buildings and took it over and started the big renovation process and cleaning them out. I believe it is haunted, but I haven't seen enough of it to like tell you like fully like, oh yeah, it's haunted. Like I just had like some very, very rare experiences here. I've seen like things that I think like it's someone else that are walking through the building and I go and try to say like, hi to them or something like that. No one would be there. These are the dorms. There was one time, this was the creepiest thing that has ever happened here. I was the first door one and we were walking around and we went into this room and there was a guy and he was completely in black in a hood and he was just staring at the sink in this pitch black room, no flashlight, no anything by himself, just standing there. I like walked in there and I was like, nope, I'm not dealing with that. And when we went back through to go find him because other people were complaining that he was just being creepy because he was just standing there, we could not find him. We searched every room, every nook, every cranny, and he was not there. We have parents that bring their kids out and work with their kids oh. and go home laughing all night from the stories and oh. things that they've seen. And so it does, it, it brings a lot of joy to a lot of people. Natasha Williams, Idaho News 6. So the haunted mansions are taking COVID-19 precautions with extra space in the buildings and ticketed time slots as well. And you can find information and that link at IdahoNews6.com. You're watching Idaho News 6. Earlier this year, our Stephanie Garibay visited the historic Schubert Theater in Gooding, Idaho. The building was built in 1920 by Frank Robert Gooding, named after his daughter, Louise May Gooding Schubert. Residing on the corner of 4th and Main, this old theater is currently closed for renovations. Over the last century, some legendary events have taken place inside this building, from traveling vaudeville acts, a handcrafted artwork, to the days of early film and current cinema. But as we found out, there's also another story to be told. Stephanie Garibay tells us about the ghost of the Schubert Theater. I've heard stories of the ghosts that live downstairs, believed to be a female. I personally have never seen the ghost or heard anything that would make me think it was a ghost. I do know that if you're walking around this theater by yourself with a dark outside, it's kind of a spooky place to be in. All I can tell you is that because I've heard so many stories, I come in and say, don't worry, we're going to make it beautiful for you. <laughs> Some of the original stage lighting. And our hope in restoring this theater is not only to get it once again operating as a theater, but also restore it to its original glory. This is a 100-year-old historic theater, which will contribute to tourism, not only in Gooding, but also throughout the state. People need to know that we're accomplishing something. We've put on new drains. We've been able to put on a brand new roof. We've been able to clean up the flood damage that was done. We're hoping people will come forward when they realize the historical significance of this theater and the value of it when you see hand-painted canvases on the wall by Hugo Clausen, very well-known artist and who was the architect of this building. And the uh, hand-painted canvas that we have is a backdrop and signed by Ernest Miller. The original lights were gas lights. I have a family member that worked for several years as a projectionist, was here late at night many nights picking up after the movies and so forth. He has never seen the ghost. He's heard the stories. I've heard a lot of people talk about the ghost, but I've never heard, talked to anybody that actually has seen or been in the presence of the ghost. But we have several buildings in Gooding that are haunted with ghosts. Standing on this stage used to bring a feeling of excitement to people in Gooding, and some community members are hoping to bring that back. Okay. Got it. Uh-oh. Is that a ghost? The ghost. Is that a ghost? <laughs> the theater's always been a gathering place. It's always been a place of entertainment. But as you, you talk about the ghost, the ghost might be just some of the past people that have been here. There's signatures of people with some great notoriety. Marilyn Monroe, Groucho Marx, many of the vaudeville acts. It's possible that it's just the ghost of the people that have been here and the history that they've brought to this theater and the excitement that they've brought that still lingers here. 
The Schubert Theater was not the only building in Gooding to have a ghost story or two. Tomorrow on Halloween night, we take you inside Idaho's former tuberculosis hospital and Gooding College with the help of the Western Idaho Paranormal Team to find out, is it really haunted? In 2010, our photojournalist Doug Locksmith and a group of paranormal investigators went inside Idaho's former tuberculosis hospital and once Gooding College. Back then, the building was in the process of being restored. Only a small portion of the building operated as a bed and breakfast called the Get In. Most of the property at the time was unoccupied, decaying from years of abandonment. Originally built in 1920, the building served as the men's dormitory and classrooms for the Gooding College. There were also two other buildings on campus, the 1917 Girls Dormitory and the main tuberculosis hospital building. Today, only one building remains, the 1920 Men's Dormitory. After 2012, new owners renamed the bed and breakfast business to the University Inn. And for the last 11 years, many parts of the building were reconditioned to be hotel rooms and meeting spaces. As time went by in this small Idaho town, one thing is for certain, supernatural interest in the building has not wavered. Photojournalist Doug Locksmith and the Western Idaho Paranormal Group returned to Idaho's old TB hospital and getting college with hopes of connecting to Idaho's historical past. <music> We're just here to try to communicate. Did you have tuberculosis? Were you a student here when this was a college? Whenever we come out here, things happen. You just never know what you're gonna find. Are you right here with us? I do believe that this place is haunted. Are you in this corner over here? I believe that it takes a tremendous amount of energy. That's all we really are is energy. How many people actually died in this building? And when you die, your soul, your spirit, if you believe that goes to another realm, whether it's heaven, a waiting area, whatever. But your energy, I believe, still stays here. Does it bother you to have us up here asking you questions like this? I'm not here to chase them away. I'm not here to hurt them. Are you a little boy or a little girl? I'm here to listen. I want to listen to them. I want to know their stories. Or maybe were you a doctor or a nurse here? You know, I would like them to be remembered. Yeah, two point two. Yeah, and then it immediately drops. When I go down in the basement, especially when I go down the hallway that way, there's been a few times I felt like something's following me. Is there somebody down here? Ooh, I, I got spider web feeling just now. Investigators' claims of being touched, overwhelming emotional sensations to overwhelming sad sensations. Uh, one of my investigators actually broke down into tears the other night. Do you like to play catch? Definitely an interesting experience. There's some things that I've experienced while investigating these that make me believe that this building is haunted. You can come pet my doggy. It's rare to get a picture. Come pet my dog again. And it's really rare to get a video. Can you tell me what your name is? I would say probably 98 to 99% of the time, it's all audio. We think it's a little boy that runs around the building. Do you know who that little boy is? We've caught several voices. Uh, most prominently, we have a voice of a, a small child. We actually caught in the area that we're standing in right now. Last year while we were here, we had an investigator that had brought his son out and they did kind of a, a small investigation during the day. His son went home and that night about 1130, the building was empty and my investigator was coming upstairs and going outside for some equipment. As he was leaving, we caught a voice that says, bye Dada. It's a very, very special piece of evidence because a lot of the voices that we get or whispers are very difficult to understand, but this one was very clear. I don't think there's anything here that can hurt me. Are you sitting next to the bowl of candy? For me, it's the cool factor, and every once in a while you do get surprised, and like I said, you get that quick, oh my goodness, but uh, I don't believe that uh, there's any entities or anything like that that can, can hurt me. The level of activity that we've experienced here over the years never ceases to disappoint. There's definitely things that are happening around here that we're trying to figure out. One piece of evidence is what makes you keep coming back over and over again. Western Idaho Paranormal rented out the entire building for a few days to perform their investigation, placing video and audio recorders throughout the common areas with hopes of capturing something haunting. You can check out video and audio clips of their findings on their Facebook group, Western Idaho Paranormal. And to watch our original 2010 story and other Idahaunts, just head over to our website, idahonews6.com.